Hi there, and thanks for watching. This video will provide an overview of the batch entry process. We will discuss what kinds of batches you can create in Altru and how to customize them to get the information you need into the database. We can access batch entry from many different places in Altru, such as from the constituents page in the maintenance section or from revenue in the transaction section. On the batch entry page, you will notice two tabs, an uncommitted batch tab and a committed batch tab. On the uncommitted tab, you can add, view, and manage your batches that are available for data entry. You can also commit any open batch and update its status. You can also run a validation report for any revenue batch to verify the data entry of payment information. The report will calculate the total count and dollar value of payments, pledges, recurring gifts, and match gift claims in the batch. The Committed tab displays information about your batches that were committed to the database. When you commit a batch to the database, the program uses its data to create or update records in the database. Before creating any batches, let's discuss the tasks and configuration features on this page. In the task menu, you can use the batch search to search for and open any batch. Once you add a batch, you can use the batch search page at any time to find it. In the configuration menu, you can configure batch numbering schemes, batch workflows, and batch templates. The first configuration task is to configure batch numbering schemes. On the batch numbering scheme page, you can manage the numbering schemes used to create batches. There are two types of numbering schemes, manual and auto-generated. When you create a manual numbering scheme, you can specify the batch number you want to use. When using an auto-generated numbering scheme, the program will automatically assign the batch number. The batch numbering grid displays the batch name and the next available batch number. From this grid, you can edit and update these numbering schemes. The next configuration task is batch workflows. In a batch workflow, you define the steps and status of each stage of a batch. From the time that it's created to the time that it's committed, you can also specify which status allows editing. Just like in a batch numbering scheme, each batch type will have a workflow. The third configuration task is adding and managing batch templates. The batch template contains all basic information that will be entered into the batch. You can customize the fields in your batch template so it fits the needs of your organization. For example, if we open a constituent batch template, we can select the fields to be included in the batch. We can select the commit options, and we can specify any permissions, like what roles have access to this template. Now, let's add a batch. On the batch entry page, click Add. On the Add form, select the batch template. We will be adding constituents to the database. Notice the Field Options tab. This will show all of the available fields already selected from the template. If you want to add additional fields, we could do that now. Let's add First Name. We can move the selected fields order by using the arrows. We can also set defaults. So let's say we were only adding individual constituents. In the constituent type, we could select Individual. This will be pre-populated in our batch and will save time in the data entry process. Once you are comfortable with all of the fields in the batch, click OK. Then we will select the owner of the batch, which will be your username. If you are using a revenue batch, there are additional fields to enter, projected number of transactions, and the projected amount in the batch. Let's click Save. Now that our batch is open, we can start entering information. Let's enter the constituent first name and last name. We will enter address information, Once you have all of your information in the batch, you can validate the batch to see if any errors exist. Our validation is complete without any errors. On the batch, we can also set row messages. Let's say that you are creating this batch and someone else will be entering the information. 
you can set a row message for them to see when they're entering the information. Just highlight the row and click Set Row Message. You will now see an information icon on that row, but don't forget, before you commit a batch, you must clear all of the row messages by clicking Clear All. Now let's say that you want to add birth date to the batch. We could click Customize Fields, and we can add this field to the batch. And click Save. and we will fill in the birth date field. When you are ready to push this information into the database, save and close the batch. On the batch entry screen, highlight the batch and click Commit. On the Commit parameters, you can select whether you want to validate first, check for duplicates, delete batch after committing, or create an exception batch. I always recommend to mark the checkbox to check for duplicates and create an exception batch, then click Start. Once the process completes, you should see a completed status. Back in Batch Entry, this batch will no longer appear on the Uncommitted Batch tab. You should now see it on the Committed Batches. Now let's find our constituent we added to the database. In Constituents, Constituent Search. We can now see Jackie Smith, who we just added through the batch. Well, that's all for this video. Stay tuned for more videos about batch and import.